The Honorable Assistant Minister for Health and Medical Services, the Permanent Secretary is not here, he will come later. He start up at the moment, as you know, that we have three new border quarantine cases, so they're just sorting out some issues around there. The distinguished uh, retired nurses that are here, thank you very much. So glad to see you today. What a blessing to see you. And what a blessing you are to the profession and also to health in this country and the nation building that we've gone through. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and also FNU, I'd like to acknowledge <coughs> FNU. Uh, and uh, what a wonderful complex and the management and uh, the chan vice chancellor and also the uh, College of Medicine and Nursing. I'd like to acknowledge you for and uh, thank you for utilizing your wonderful complex. I can assure you I've been here many times before. <laughs> Even uh, more than 20 years ago. <laughs> at that time I was sitting at the back over there. Now we'll live. It gives me great pleasure to be here to express the gratitude of the Fijian government and uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, all Fijians, in particular the Ministry of Health and your colleagues, to all nurses and midwives and nurse practitioners and those who have left nursing as a profession to go into other professions. I've seen many of them, believe me or not, in management, in, uh, in uh, life insurance, in banking, They've all begun their career as a nurse, and I'm here to actually thank you and congratulate you on the International Year of the Nurse. You truly are the pillar at the backbone of the ministry, and I'm happy to celebrate this day with you as we launch the Purple Ribbon to mark the International Year of the Nurses and the Midwife. When I supported this idea at the uh, uh, Executive Board of the World uh, Health Organization meeting in 1990, for 2020 to be the International Year of the Nurse, when Jamaica moved the motion, I had no qualms about putting up our flag. You had to take your, your, the name flag of your country, so Fiji, and as soon as you hear motion and you want to contribute, you turn it up there. Soon as it came, I just turned it, turned it up. I had no hesitation, because I know that the Honorable Prime Minister values the contributions you have and we value, as a government, we value the contributions that nursing have put, not only into healthcare, but also into the development of this nation. Your children, or your children are the doctors, are the engineers, are the, the people that actually build this nation. You work in also helping those people. So there was no arms about it. We were going to support it. We supported it because we knew that you mean so much to the development of this nation. Little did we know that when we did so, the whole group of us that supported it, and I think there was about 20 countries in total that supported it, little did we know and the many, many other countries that said yes after that, that this year would be the year of COVID-19, where dedication and commitment in serving those who are sick, especially in the times of the pandemic, is called upon you. I take my hat off to all of you nurses. And as you know, our 32nd case, which was a border quarantine case, was a nurse, a colleague of mine, a colleague of yours, who contracted the disease while following all best practices while serving in the front line. She remained loyal, committed, faithful, and dedicated, just like all of you have been. And she's well and healthy and saving again today. A virtue that I see consistently in all of you, even in the midst of this challenge. I'm certain that Florence Nightingale would be proud of all nurses around the world today if she was here. This year has been designated as the year to appreciate your sacrifices, appreciate you as a mother, appreciate you as a daughter, appreciate you as a leader, and your role that you play in the development of our country and also in the protection of health right across the world by WHO and all the countries. It's also the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale, the lady of the lab, who was a visionary nurse and leader and founder of modern nursing. She was a lady who was not only bright, she was, intel she was intelligent, she was spiritual, she was passionate, she had the whole package. And none other person I could think of could be a greater beacon of hope of what nursing is 
than this lady Florence Nightingale when you read her stories and what she did. Nurses, midwives, nurse practitioners are key to the achievement of WHO's goal of universal health coverage because you play a critical role at all levels of care. You are in the big hospital, you are in the intensive care unit, you're in the subdivisional hospital, you're in the public health teams, you're in the health center, where there is no doctor, you are there as the nursing station. You are everywhere. And therefore, you are the backbone of our Ministry of Health and Medical Services. With the inclusion of the nursing practitioner, we will now begin, we are beginning to see a diversification and specialization in the broader coverage around public health and also in the clinical areas in which they are beginning to put their feet into. WHO highlights the push to increase the global nursing workforce. Nurses and midwives make up more than half the healthcare workforce worldwide. And WHO estimates that there will be a shortage of nearly 9 million nurses globally. And as the world faces growing healthcare demands and evolving challenges around health, the need for nurses and midwives and nurse practitioners in this country continue to increase as governments across the globe press towards fulfilling the obligation of the Sustainable Development Goal 2030. In Fiji's effort and commitments towards its achieving its SDG 3 and universal health coverage, the Ministry is currently embarking on remodeling our services to ensure that everybody has access to our services without any financial hardship. For long, the clinical program and public health system have worked in silos, and I and Assistant Minister, Honorable Assistant Minister, and the Permanent Secretary have sat down with the Chief Medical Advisor and said, we cannot do that anymore. We have to integrate. We have to come together. We have to share resources. We have to sit at the table and understand that we are all equals in this partnership of saving lives. Because at the end of the day, the marginalized and the underprivileged, they really do not care whether it's a consultant or it's a nurse. They represent us as healthcare workers. And therefore, it's important that we integrate and utilize all our resources together to move forward. We have established the divisional command centers. And for those of you who may not know, your colleagues here will be able to tell you how it works. But essentially, if you go down the road to the old medical superintendent's courtesy in Tamabua, is the command center for the Central Eastern Division. So there, the medical superintendent of CWM, the medical superintendent of Tamahua, and his colleagues, the medical superintendent from St. Giles, and the divisional medical officer, Eastern and Central, they sit there and they work together to pool their resources so that we can be able to combat all the health needs that are there. I've asked these command centers to ensure that we push out outreach services as the key to our moving forward. And we must not marginalize any person and any community. We must reach out to every Fijian, irrespective of where they are and their conditions. And I completely believe that this is in keeping with the Nessus Pledge. I completely believe that this is also in keeping with what Florence Nightingale said. I'm highlighting this because I've had numerous outreaches across Fiji with our floating vessel, the marine vessel Vebuiti. We've visited maritime areas, including Kandabu, Lomoiviti, Lau, and our nurses have taken the lead role in these outreaches. We also be aware that last year, around May, we, the WHO came down and they assessed us, the Fiji Emergency Medical Assistance Team, and we became the ninth country in the world to be certified by WHO, and the first small island development state. And there were nurses that were key to making sure that we had this assessment, that we did it well, and we were pudentic uh, to the detail so that we could be able to tick all the boxes wanted by WHO. We have recently contracted 207 new graduates into our three base hospitals. While about 220 have just completed the 18-month internship and absorbed into the government health system. I am informed that there are about another 230 more graduates graduating from the two educational institutions at the end of this year. Today is the launch of the Purple Ribbon, Royal Purple to be exact, to mark the culmination of the year of the nurse and the midwife. Purple is considered a spiritual color that relates to the nature of the work that, nation, that nurses do, full of compassion, kindness, and the love of humanity. Saying that, I'm led to the verses in the Bible in Exodus 1, 15 to 21, which relates vividly the story of how the entire Israelite generation was preserved from the tyranny of the king of Egypt by the hands of two God-fearing midwives by the name of Sephara and Poor. 
God allowed not only their names, but most importantly, the midwife profession to be immortalized in the word of God so that all generations will know the important significance of your role in saving lives. I thank specifically all the retired nurses that are sitting in this room today. I thank you because our lives and that of the young generations of today started in your hands as a nurse and a midwife during your time. I always tell people this, a nurse birthed me, I do not know who, but it was a nurse who birthed me. My mom didn't do it alone. She said that she went to a hospital, to Anderson Maternity Hospital, and she was birthed by nurses. Whoever that little two ladies is, I can tell you, see, they did a bloody good job because I'm here today. They did very, very well. I'd like to thank them and their families. Thank you for setting a high standard of nursing during your years of service. Nursing capacity and professionalism in Fiji is recognized around the world today because you set the bar when you had the chance. For that, we thank you. And uh, we say thank you once again because you've done it in the times when the challenges you faced, we cannot cope or we could not uh, understand those of us who live today. We may say that those of us who live today, that the challenges we face are more difficult than what they face, but you can't imagine what they faced in that time. So thank you for your sacrifices. To our nurses currently at the public system and the private system, for those who are working outside of mainstream health, thank you for what you're doing. You are the unsung heroes that tirelessly go beyond to provide your best, even in drastic circumstances.